Today we're going to build this side table. Or is it a coffee table? It's a side table. I'm Forrest. All right, so first a crash course on what's going on here. This is Will. This is Kyle. They're both fellow YouTube woodworkers. I'm Chris. You know that I use a lot of grizzly tools in my shop. Have been since I started woodworking. They do too. Grizzly recently decided to put on a challenge and asked the three of us if we'd participate. We said yes. So they sent us a stash of wood. That's the wood. The rules were, build something out of it and put up a video at the same time. That's today. And this is the video. Got it? Good. All right, so for my project, I decided to use just two species of the wood. The spalted western curly maple and bees wing figured babinga. I started off at the joiner by cleaning up one edge of the maple and then proceeded to do something that a lot of woodworkers would probably consider sacrilegious. And that is, took this big chunk of wood and cut it into a bunch of smaller two inch by two inch sticks. There were a lot of these pieces and it took a while at the table saw, joiner, and planer to get everything nice and clean. So while I'm doing that, I'm gonna address something. As a woodworker, I feel like there's this unwritten rule that I'm supposed to love wood, and in particular that I'm supposed to get excited about rare or highly figured pieces. But if I'm being honest with myself, I don't. My favorite pieces of wood actually tend to be the more homogenous and plain looking pieces. And I think that's because at the end of the day, I don't love wood. I love creativity. And I guess I want my pieces to highlight my ideas and my creativity, not Mother Nature's. So there it is. My woodworking badge will be on your desk first thing tomorrow morning. Anyhow, so after all the pieces were milled, I did my best to keep track of things with some blue tape and a sharpie, and then went about cross-cutting each piece in half, or at least close to in half. Then I took this 45 degree square thing that I made on my CNC, clamped it to my fence, and proceeded to cut a bevel, or miter, I don't even know anymore, onto one end of my pieces. There were a lot of pieces. After that, I had to figure out how I was going to ensure that each piece came out to the exact same length when I cut the second of the miter, bevel, I guess, mevels. So I screwed this off-cut of plywood to my cross-cut sled, and it actually seemed to work out really well. Again, there were a lot of pieces. The next step was to cut a dado, or actually two dados, into each piece. These are going to be for the babinga, which is going to tie everything together, structurally, not aesthetically. And actually on a side note, I think a good rule of thumb generalization that I can make is, the longer the name of a wood species is, or the more adjectives there are that get tacked onto its name, the less of a fan I'm going to be of it. So spalted western curly maple, or beeswing figured babinga, nah. But if you got some oak, or cherry, or walnut, cool. And in fact, you know, if you ever find yourself in the position where you're able to make up your own title for whatever it is you do for work, take a cue from wood and keep it simple. When you embellish, we can tell that you're posturing. So for example, I would never describe myself as the chief content marketing strategist and social media influencer for Four Eyes Incorporated. I'd just say, I make YouTube videos. All right. Getting back on track. Once I was finished cutting all the dados, I could finally glue up all of my 16 pieces into four four-piece frames, essentially. I let them dry overnight, and then the next day I came back and cut some slots to insert some splines into to help make them a little bit stronger. These are going to be made from a small offcut of the babinga. Next I took another chunk of the babinga and cut it to a width of right around 2 inches, just so that it was narrow enough to fit into the dados that I had previously cut. And then I used the planer to slowly thin it out so that it was just slightly proud of the maple once it was glued in. 
And speaking of gluing it in, that night I was able to glue everything together and then the next day I came back and cleaned everything up and put on the finishing touches. So like I said towards the top of the video, this is a sort of fun little contest that I'm participating in with the other two guys, both of whom are awesome craftsmen by the way, so if you haven't already seen their stuff, definitely go check it out. I'll put a couple links to their videos in the description. And also in the description, I'm going to put a link to the Grizzly webpage where you can check out Kyle and Will's finished projects along with mine and vote for which one's your favorite. By doing that, you're also going to be eligible for a chance to win a $150 gift card. But don't wait too long because the contest closes on February 9th, 2018. For more information, check out the contest rules in the description below and check out the Grizzly webpage. So it probably shouldn't come as a surprise to you that I'm not super thrilled about what I made here. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that fancy wood is bad and nobody should ever use it. I'm just saying I don't like to use it. And I don't think it really lends itself to the type of stuff that I enjoy designing and building, which is more based on shapes, angles, and even silhouettes than highlighting the natural beauty of the material. But if you like it and enjoy working with it, that's rad, and I'm happy for you. Because that's what makes woodworking and life interesting. We're all different, and different things float our respective boats, no matter what species they're made from. Thanks for watching, and if this was your first time to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks. Also, go check out one of my other videos so you can see the kind of stuff I normally build. See you next time.